If we keep on doing things like that, you know, eventually, yes, we, we will uh, perish. Fukushima, has your organization looked into that? And what is the significance of that? We took three trips to Fukushima with our scientific team in order to establish the facts. And we found out that uh, not only there were continuous hydrogen explosions in the reactors, not only the pool water, what we call the pool, you know, had melted and had exposed, you know, the old spent uh, fuel casings, which are made of some kind of zirconia, but some of those pools had literally exploded and the fuel rods, they had literally exploded all over the location of the plant and beyond, releasing uh, untold amounts of radioactivity. Uh, we do believe that there were a lot of victims of radioactivity, you know, at the Fukushima location. Uh, the government of Japan, in conjunction with the nuclear industry, they are very close together. It's a revolving door institution that you have a government job, then immediately you are getting, you know, a high level civilian job in one of those organizations, power and utilities. They're very good, you know, for ex government, senior bureaucrats. That they are actually supposed to also control that industry, yet they fail. Not only they do not control it, but the same people running the show. So in essence, it's like giving a free card to the nuclear industry to police itself, build its own plans without much mind to security. But most importantly, to necessitate that all the people of Japan, they're going to be you know, consuming nuclear energy. Japan maintained it was a level five disaster. Environmental parliament objected to it. We visited with the government of Japan. They did not want to accede to our demand to declare it you know, a, a much worse nuclear di disaster by a gym geometric growth from five to six, from six to seven. And we say it's definitely a seven. Our own scientists said it's a seven. And for one week, you know, uh, uh, we decided after about uh, probably three weeks of back and forth with the government of Japan that it's not working anymore with diplomacy. Soft power, you know, is not cutting it. So we had a public um, uh, opening in London uh, the afternoon of Monday after we had come back from Japan. We had a press uh, conference and we declared, you know, that not only this is a level 7 disaster, worse than Chernobyl, at least on an equal footing, but a lot worse for this and this and these reasons, but the government of Japan is hiding the facts from the people. This happened on, on Monday, we had a big uh, call from the Japanese people of the government, you know, threatening with all sorts of, you know, nasty things and effects and lawsuits or whatever, and we'll never be able to go into the country again. But come Friday, during the cycle of time that was the news in Japan, they talk to us at Brussels and in London, they apologize for this and they say, we'll come clean. And they declared, you know, that it's actually a level seven disaster. They decided under pressure from the United States a lot that they could actually have to shatter these plants and eventually bury them like Chernobyl into a mountain of silica and uh, sort of vitrify them and then put on top, you know, exactly what you suggested, boric acid and then more sand and more cement and then on top of it, you know, cover it with lead so the radiation reflects inwards. And all of those, they are positive things, but they're going to take a long time to do it because they have to collect all these spent fuel rods and they are making an attempt also to collect out the cores. So it might take a couple of years, you know, reasonably to completely shut down this plant. But the situation to this day, contrary to popular thinking, is still out of control. So ultimately, only when it gets buried, you know, this would become, you know, an entombment situation, like a, like, a, uh, like a big pyramid, you know, to the untold pharaohs of nuclear energy. But it has to be sort of closed in. And unless we do that quickly, you know, we are running further and further risks of pollution. We must have to be diligent. We must make even more of an effort to quickly bury this thing, you know, so we can put it behind us. Unfortunately, Fukushima, unlike Chernobyl, is not landlocked. It's right on the water. It's seeping into the Earth's water supply, it's seeping into the oceans, you know, it's not just radiating into the atmosphere cloud. So to that effect, it's perhaps even a lot more dangerous. And lastly, in Chernobyl we had 87 tons of fissionable material, which in and of itself is a lot, it causes so much damage. In Fukushima we have 1,653 tons of fissionable material. That is almost 20 times what we had in Chernobyl. That makes a huge difference.